Empire, they're going to get one Radiant of their signature Team, yeah. supports yes. that I actually haven't myself gotten to cast them play so far here uh, at TI. But Disruptor, this is one of my favorite heroes to watch and a really good hero in synergy with Bounty Hunter. The track combination with being able to glimpse it essentially means remaining. that it's beautiful. You can really never get away. Like we saw another game with a bounty hunter Five and Tinker, remaining. I think it was, when we saw the the missiles and how potent they can be. This is kind of the same thing, except when you get glimpsed, you're almost just guaranteed to die. Like it's a death sentence for a lot of Dire these heroes. Team ban. Indeed, the disruptor. It's gonna be a lot of fun to watch and very smart pick as well in this situation. Now the final bans from the side. Hot six taking away that Phantom Lancer. We are, of course, imagining to still look for silence here. I, I, I think it will be resolution Ten on the left, remaining. taking it in the mid against, of course, uh, MP's queen. And uh, okay, Empire ban out hit. Razor here as their final, final ban. So Hot six still looking for that final core hero. Uh, it, I'd imagine it is going to be four revs. They could swap it around and have the queen in the safe and. Uh, and put MP mid on something else. We've been seeing a lot of that too. We the Queen actually we, yeah. making the, either the safe lane transition or you just put it in a dual lane with a, a strong off laner like Clockwork or Tusk or Spirit Breaker, something like that. Ten and then you just remaining. end up with a, a really self sustaining core hero who can still transition very Five well into mid and late remaining. because Queen doesn't really have a, a weak stage in the game. She's always relevant, even prior to Reserve BKBs time. being purchased and after them, she's still very, very good. So. I wouldn't be surprised to see them maybe try something like that, but maybe leaning more towards just the, the standard core, just deciding what they want to try to pick here. There's a couple of options, but if we're assuming that it's offlane Shaker, and it should be pretty much from Empire yeah, since I'm it sure has Disruptor Yoku and, Shaker, yeah. and Bounty already. Yoku's legit. Offlane Shaker is not really that hard to zone, so you can probably pick something pretty greedy. It just has to be okay with fighting mid game, because if you look at Empire's draft, their team definitely has fighting. Like, they can come at you at any point, and once track is available and they have that disruptor, they're going to be looking for kills. Indeed, and Hot Six, I'm sure they're aware of this. They need something that's going to help them out against what Empire are looking for. Final pick here for Hot Six. It's an important one as well, uh, especially in Empire's eyes here. As we've been saying, Empire looking for that 2 0 victory here. And this being game one of this two game series between Empire and Hot Six. We're only taking through the time here, Hot Six now, leaving it to the last second as they decide on their final core hero for the side. What will they get for Rev to play this time? I mean, I guess TA really, no, TA remaining. is not going to be the hero. I wouldn't do that. It's really tough to play TA yeah. against this lineup. There's a lot of nasty no, You kind of, you need BKB oh. against these heroes as Templar okay. Assassin. It's going to be the Jug. Nice. Okay. Dire team pick. Yeah, Jug's really good. The thing is, if you get glimpsed, there's a delay between when the glimpse actually sends you back, so you're always able to spin. And especially against heroes like Lashrak. The Silent Wraith King. Yeah, you're going to be able to fight up against that, I think, quite easily as Chug. The only thing that's a bit worrisome is Wraith King is such a hard hero to really commit to killing. And Empire have shown in the past that they love picking this hero when, in fact, the enemy team has a lot of sustain and a lot of kind of all-in type abilities. So think Snowball, Omni Slash, Hookshot. Those are all abilities that make you hard commit to an engagement. And that way, when the ultimates are down, maybe you pop the Wraith King ultimate and you reincarnate, you come back up, and then you're kind of back to square run, right? And then you don't have Omni to worry about. You don't have all these other big damage dealing abilities. So in those types of situations, I feel Wraith King really thrives. And I like the drafts, to be honest. I, I honestly can't say from the draft that one team has the advantage here. It's all going to come down to play. Absolutely. Yeah, it feels like a very even draft remaining. across the board from both sides. And we're certainly we're going to have a game on our hands here between Empire Five and seconds Six. Remaining. We just wait for the heroes to be selected up by the players and we'll get ready to join uh, the, uh, the players right on the playing field. And here we go. Well, we're going to have a quick pause and... Uh, well, okay, we are going to have to need a, a reconnect here by looks of it from some of the members of Hot Six. So we'll just hold on for that one. I'm just saying, always want to fly a disruptor. That guy's, that guy's got the disruptor, I mean, you know? I don't know the stats on how many games he's played, but uh, well, actually, actually, I do know the stats. <laughs> you have a book right I've here. I've got a book right in front of me. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Is, is it up there for him? I'm sure it must be the Disruptor. It's one of their most played heroes, I think, in general. Definitely one okay, of his so most played heroes. Well, this is alphabetical, isn't it? Right. Um, is the, no, that's not Empire. That's, is it alphabetical? It is, yeah. The teams are alphabetical. Okay. Uh, that's E-Home. And... Uh, oh... They put oh, empires under team empire. They put it under team. I mean, who? Come on, who categorizes? You've been bamboozled, like that? Owen. Who categorizes like this? 
Narby. No, we don't need those stats. <laughs> ah, here we go. Empire. Right, let's have a look what the stats say about Team Empire's uh, Disruptor. Is it up there in competitive? Um, it, okay, so in 6.84, it's six wins and five losses. So it's kind of hit or miss. It's not amazing, but that is 11 games that it's been played in. Uh, what else have we got? Anything else that's been picked by Empire that's uh, been played a lot in 6.84? Not, actually, the rest of it, not as much. They haven't got Shaker up there as one of their most played. Um, but we, yeah, it's actually one of the most banned against them. has been banned against them nine times in the patch. And well, I'm going to put this down before I, I sound too statty and too clever. As uh, We need to get ourselves into the nitty-gritty and into the whole, uh, the whole Dota. D dirt, Dota. Dota, I, yes. I was trying, to, I was trying to say Dirty Dota, and it kind of mixed together to make Dota. I think you were just trying to do a Toby impression. Dirta. Yeah. That's pretty close, right? No. I think more, people who are watching would understand. Toby's more of a kind of like a doe. He's a doe, not a dirt. Dirta too is not <laughs> down south. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the game. Hot Six versus Empire about to kick off. If you're joining us from the mainstream, I'm sure the, uh, the experts have already been through the fact that Empire need a 2-0 victory here to manage to get themselves in a position where they could look for the upper oh, bracket. Oh, Jerax with the sentry and the dust. They're going to go for this one. Aloha does trying to tango through, but there's a heen in a Ferev, and this is going to be your first blood. Jerax there. Hats off to him, getting the sentry down in time. Very nicely done there by the side. And Hot Six off to a good start. And, well, Empire, they've got to be careful. They need this 2-0, and it's not going to happen with plays like that. Now, giving away the first blood, obviously not the way you want to start the game. But it should be kind of known by now that a lot the of these teams are adapting to begins. that bounty hunter, kind of rotating into the jungle very early. Like, everyone does it. And eventually, it's going to be like what happened to Courier Snipes, where first, like, maybe for a week or so, Bounty Hunter was able to snipe Courier pretty easily, and then people just started realizing that it actually just happens every game, so they changed the way that they play before the creeps actually spawn. This is a perfect example of that. Like, they just sense it coming, sentries down, they just see the hero, they get a free kill. Indeed, the lower dance is going to do what a lot of bounty do. Hang around this mid lane, help out resolution at the start. I mean, he's a less anyway, so it's going to be a very strong mid lane nonetheless. And already, just like a couple of hits and MP. It's not nice. He's got the backup of Jerax here in this lane, so we are going to see kind of a two on two for the time being in the mid lane. Your bottom lane's got Yoku, of course, on that solo off lane shaker, dealing with Ferev on this joke. He's going to be there with the backup on the Dazzle. And Sun, once again, we saw him earlier play this clock in the uh, newbie game. and. And I've got to say, his clock performance was pretty impressive um, back in that game. He got a lot of farm very, very quickly. Had the Axe of Blade Mail in a very reasonable timing. So we'll see if he's able to do that again this time. And uh, just, uh, of course, we've been through it before. But always want to fly. Is there on the Disruptor backing up Silence Wraith King? I feel like in this offlane, somebody should actually get a decent amount. Like, getting Glimpse back into a Wraith King stun is kind of scary. But the thing is with Disruptor, is he's not actually that high damage dealing of a support. His nuke is very good per point, but most Disruptor players are always going to go 1-3-1. One, one, so you don't actually scale the nuke. More often than not, like, pretty much what Sunbee is doing right now, he's just literally walking into always want to fly. You're going to see a lot of that, just to make sure that he can stay in experience range. And this could be another one of those lanes where if he gets to, like, level 4 or 5, unobstructed, he could at the very least force out glimpses in a way that always want to fly is not going to be able to use them when he's running away and try to go for a kill. But this is a good timing. They can yeah. try to kill him here. They're moving in onto Sun. They'll drop down the kinetic field. He is stuck up. He'll get the Cox actually forcing always want to fly across. And now with the glimpse back, bring him back on the right side of the Cox for Empire to start having our way at him here. They're going to need to look for the body block and always want to fly trying for it. Isn't quite able to get it off. They'll have another stun in a second, but no, not quick enough. As uh, Sun's able to get himself, uh, has got the self and the clarity here. Bottom lane, he with a haste rune, moving in onto Yoku. Now with the Blade Fury as well. Yoku, he's in a lot of trouble here. Will we have to get out of the Fisher? And he's going to look for the TP. Not going to be enough there with a the heal bomb from Heen on the Dazzle. They will find themselves the second kill yet of the game, Hot Six. A really nice rotation coming in there from Heen. Very uncommon for Dazzles to skill Poison Touch at level 2. I mean, obviously it's situational, right? Like, he got it because he got the haste. And he wanted to make sure he could get the kill. So very nice heads up play coming in from him. And in the meantime, like, MVP, they're still getting a decent amount out of this offlane still. Sunbees, level 3, two and a half minutes in. And we saw, even when they all into this hero, they still didn't have enough damage to kill. And Sunbee didn't even have a stout shield at that point. He just had a ring of protection. But here comes Aloha Dance. Maybe they're going to try to commit to him one more time before he gets too many levels. But the Wraith King is so far away. Like, all they can really do is just harass him a bit. If he comes up with this creep wave, which he just might do. I mean, Sun has been playing very confidently on this lane. And Empire, they're going to want to take advantage of that, if possible. And here we go, moving in. This might be it. Here we go with the slow onto it. They have got the glimpse and 
the kinetic oh, he's not he's got enough mana here for the kinetic field but with matter. the stun and the right clicks as tanky as the clockwork is is not enough and Empire now getting themselves on the board there with the first no kill. Way. Mid lane resolution trying to go into hot six MP and he's he's gonna do it. He might pay off his the life, but kicking down will oh. fall. It's gonna be a one for one here in the mid lane. And of course the fact that uh, the resolution was able to get that kill onto MP before he falls. Uh, so it will slightly favor the side of MP only just. I mean it's a very, very even trade. Yeah, the fact is when the, the mid lives. Yeah. When the other heroes are dead and then your mid dies first, that's always going to be like a, a losing proposition for you. But it's not like MP is very far behind attack. at all. It's a it's pretty even exchange. There's like a hundred experience difference. The main thing is just overall CS. The CS is Dyer's really the thing that we always fortified. have to be like. Okay, well, Lesh is he's kind of like a a really good mid for those of you who don't know. It's very difficult to stop lightning storm spam. It's on a four second cooldown. There's no way you can really deny against this hero, especially if he's bottle crowing, because he just has so much mana he can spam for days. I mean, look at this push from Forever Nate. They're gonna yep. get the tier one at four minutes in. I mean, this is uh, a little bit of an issue here for Yoku. Yoku himself, he's found level four on, uh, on just a little bit ahead of it. In fact, the uh, sun clockwork. Mid lane still, yeah, MP. He's actually, uh, he's got the bottle coming out to him again, being fueled back and forth. But not having a fun time against this Lesh. And of course, the farm for Forever going to look very tasty. They're just going to look to continue on to the tier two. And this I like is this. a huge amount of pressure being applied. The thing is, they know that Empire can't realistically rotate to try to kill a Jug Dazzle. Like, those two heroes are very difficult to commit to. Like, maybe you can kill Heen, but there's pretty much no way you can kill Forev. Just look out! They're behind the tier two at five minutes in. Like, what is, the, what is Empire's counterplay to this? They have a Bounty Hunter and a Disruptor. Aloha Dance is only level 2. He doesn't even have a point and a Shuriken Toss right now, so he doesn't really do any damage. Which means that MVP can and pressure, and they know he's here. Yeah, and they're gonna be able to go on him straight away here. Aloha Dance getting caught out. MVP's awareness. Just getting the better at the side of Empire. Yeah, but Resolution gets a solo kill on MP in the meantime. So even though Hot 6 are pressuring very heavily here, the mid matchup is a catastrophe. Like, it's yeah. 26 to 10 for Resolution and 14 and 5 for MP, and the Queen has died twice now. Doesn't even have boots. The Lesh is certainly going to be an issue for the side of Hot 6, but elsewhere on the map, they definitely seem to have the lanes covered. Silence Farm, 29 for 12. But it is uh, it's very close to Jugs, but the fact that they've been able to get this tower is uh, of course going to put him ahead. I'd imagine the net worth, yeah, he's a good 700 on top, in fact, of the Wraith King at this early stage of the game. Resolution, though, as you said, looking pretty good here in the mid lane. I'd imagine their MVP, they're still looking towards this tier two. Once they've got this tier two, there's not going to be much more they can do in this lane, and maybe the we'll supports are going to for Lash. Yeah, the supports are going to move attack. around. Forev might even feel content to rotate with them because he has Omni available. Omni slash Snowball is really strong. Top lane. Sunbi getting caught out again here by the trial end of Empire. He will fall. And see the rotation from Yoku there catching the clockwork off guard. So nicely done there by Empire. Equalizing it out now. It's four for four. But MVP, they're going to find this tower here. Attack. And uh, I mean, tier two is six minutes in. That's not something you see every day. Well, again, it's mainly due to the Empire's composition. Their heroes are very low damage dealing. They need so many heroes in the same area to be able to get a kill. That's why you keep seeing three-man rotations just to kill the offlane clockwork. Because they just deal so little damage that they need that many to be able to guarantee that the hero will drop. And when you're going up against a potential three versus three when there's healing ward and level three shadow wave, it's just way too risky to try to invest into that. Because if you lose that fight, you're going to get even more snowball potential coming out of hot six right now. And Killing those two towers is probably the best thing that they could have done in the situation because now Jerax and Heener are looking towards middle lane to kill Resolution. It's going to be a tricky kill because Resolution does have the backup of always want to fly here. And also Yoku moving in. He's closing in on that level 6 here on the Shaker. And the top lane has done. Has he hit this 6 yet? No, very close as well. We're going to be seeing the hookshot come online for him. And Silent has hit level 6 and has decided, of course, to skill the reincarnate. And Aloha does getting rid of that pesky sentry ward that did cost him his life earlier. 4-4-4 four, four, four across the board here. Seven and a half minutes. And I just want to have an early look at the net worth difference. Because I imagine with those towers, we are going to see... It's nice not too bad. Ralph, is it? Okay, it's not bad the at all. The farm is... of the, the Lesh is keeping them. And Silent, to be fair. Resolution of right. Silent's farm. Right. Yeah, the, the farm individually on the Heroes of Empire is just a little bit higher. Their experience gain is also better because they're not committing three heroes constantly Radiant's to the same area. That's the, the common theme when you have a, a team that wants to push towers very early, is you sacrifice experience because you're sharing it between everyone instead of playing very efficiently and soaking up lanes Radiant's because you want to try to get a little attack. bit more freedom on your supports by taking the map control away. 
The other thing too is Empire's mid ward has actually kept resolution alive. The first time they rotated, they saw on the high ground that they were standing there. Oh, there is a. Is this the jugs? Yeah, it's coming out to the jug. He's, he's picked up the kit that's going to allow him to kill that bounty hunter if bounty ever comes in. He's got the dust now on him. And well, Jarex is incredibly deep here. Not quite sure what the plan was this far into enemy territory with four heroes around, and, and Jarex ran away his life. Well, that was a little bizarre. He didn't have any teammates nearby. Maybe he thought that Empire were more prioritizing mid, but they have a ward there, so they should see that they're gone. Yeah, that, that was just bizarre. I'm not really sure what the, the game plan was for him, but giving away a free kill to Empire, I'm sure they'll be happy with that. Well, mid lane, he's going to look potentially... Ah, oh, too, sp sp too speedy for you, a lower dance. No chance of catching that one out. And the Queen now at level 7, Resolution moving in. The blink back straight away now. TP reaction as well from the side of Hot 6. Oh, there's your glimpse. That's, that's one of the issues here when you're doing this against a district. Did have the Blade Fury available, didn't fancy it. Oh, oh Loa does walk into the sentry, and he's going to get denied nice. resolution there with the plays. MP's going to be alright, the glimpse is of course already down. And uh, it will just be the denied bounty hunter falling here. Sun, he's got the hookshot here on this top lane with the backup of Jerax and Heen. Empire maybe need to be a little oh, bit Oh, they converse him. Resolution's here with the help of Silent, and indeed they've got the control. The Cogs have been thrown down and with the Shallow Grave as well. He should be able to walk it off. Silent moving forward. He's going to have another Ray Fire Blast in a second. Will throw it out. And now oh, the Lightning from Resolution just ends up finishing the job. Gets them the kill onto Sun on this clockwork. Mid lane. MP just trying to take the most of this. I always want to fly soaking up this solo XP. Trying to get that level 6. Trying to get that Static Storm. Coming into 10 minutes in, 6 to 5. A very close match between these two sides. Empire with the superior farm, and of course, Hot 6 with the superior push, thanks to that bottom lane aggression. And Resolution getting caught out here by the Ice Shards, trying to turn around with the Snowball dodges there, straight in onto the pony. Oh no, the really? Damage. The Edict is able to find the kill onto Tusk. Always want to fly. Hasn't. Oh, he's got the mana here for the Glimpse. Didn't have the vision though. Yeah, and, and Yoku that. gets caught out by a hasted 4 of behind this tier 2 tower, or well I guess near it. That is probably one of the worst ways to die, to see a hasted juggernaut running at you and knowing you have no way to counterplay that at all. Just have to accept your fate in that case, but a little bit of a better exchange coming in for Hot 6. They kill Resolution, they kill Yoku. Oh, I don't see us going in with a shuriken spam. On to Forev. 7-7 seven, seven at the moment. We're talking about the fact that the Wraith King and the Leshrac are getting out of control. I mean, at the same time, Ferev's Jug is looking pretty good for 11 minutes in. Hey, he's definitely been farming up a storm here. I think he is almost... No, he does have drums finished. So I'm curious as to what his build is going to be for this game. I wonder if he'll just go with the standard like S and Y, just try to go for the, the right-click stat build that we saw a lot in 6.83, or maybe if he has some other plans, if he wants to maybe go for something a little bit more farm-oriented. Because against Wraith King, it's, it's really weird. You don't really want to build things like Aghanims, because of their 5 manning and your Omni pretty much hits only the Wraith King, it, it's almost seen as like a waste. Because you're always going to have that reincarnation. And you always have to worry about like, what do you do after your Omni is down. So, curious to see how he adapts to that. And in the meantime, Silent, he picked up uh, Armlet first. We've seen some Midas's, we've seen Blink Daggers and stuff, but Armlet we always talk about for Strength Heroes. It's pretty much the best that you can get in terms of damage output. And they're going to try to go on Silent. I don't know if this is the play. They've got a lot of heroes here to go for it. Always want to fly there with the back, but he's hit level 6 as well. So this is going to be a massive oh kinetic field and static God. storm. Catching out Sun and Jarek. Sun getting low. We'll try and walk it off. He's actually going to live. They've lost Jarek here on the toss. Silent with the crits. On to Ferret. Ferret trying to run Silent. Moving forward. He's got the armor toggle available. They're taking down two. Turning around with Sonic Wave. It's still not enough to bring down Silent. Silent's going to be able to talk to himself without one. MP gets the blink back on the Queen of Pain. But now with the Ray Fire Blast on Tahin. Can they look for more? They've managed to get MP. MP's going to go down. They get the Dazzle as well. Four heroes dropping. And we talked about always one of Fly's Disruptor and, and for uh, reasons that have been just shown there. A lot of that occurring because of his presence. And 11 for 7. Empire finding the first big team fight of the game. Of all the heroes to try to go on, you go on Silent, who's playing Wraith King. You know his ultimate is up. Why do you commit to that when you have... They didn't even have vision of the lane. Like, they had no lane ward. They didn't have TPs. Or they didn't have, like, vision of TPs or anything like that, right? So they commit to a hero who they know that they're going to have to kill twice. And they didn't commit, like, a little bit. They committed a lot. Like, everything. That was definitely not the play coming in from Hot 6. And Empire, they take full advantage. The other thing to remember, too, is those are all track kills as well. Because Aloha Dance was actually level 6 Dyer's at the beginning of that team fight, and also a large attack. reason why they were able to get that glimpse back onto the Queen of Pain. So, 
not really going too well right now for Hot Six. You give away too many more fights like that against a team with a Leshrac, you're going to have some serious issues. Indeed, forever. He's just applying a pressure here on the top lane for the backup of MP Radiant's on this clock. So they can get themselves a tier one. In fact, the full Dyer's five man of Hot Six are in the neighborhood. Attack. Resolution just starting to push down this mid lane. Yoku's not doing too bad on top of the Tranquil and Sol Ring. 1200 gold on his way towards the blink. 13 minutes in, Dyer's and yeah, it looks like forever. Should be able to claim this. The fortification Dyer's coming out, but they're going to stand their ground attack. and will claim this top one. Towards the mid lane, Aloha Dance coming in. Has fallen. They do have four of the members of Empire here. And they haven't quite been able to take down this tier one. Still out of deny range though. Sun on the high ground with the hook shot. Can a hot six fight into this though? That is the question. They've got Jarex and Hina about, and well, they're going to try it. But the hook shot just a little bit too short. Won't be able to find anything with that one. And uh, we'll just get himself the D ward here. It's probably better that he didn't hook that, to be honest. Like, there were mass TPs available for Empire. They had Echo Slam available. I don't know if they really want to fight near Tier 1. I don't know if they want to fight at all, actually. They're fighting right now, I feel, is very dangerous. Like, maybe because Silence ult is down. Oh, he's going to go for it. He always want to fucking get out of the ring. Yo, oh, no, the creep blocks him in there. Always want to fly. He's going to lose his life. Silent. Can't really look for anything more here. Is on his own against Forever Dyer's and MP. And MP does have that attack. Sonic Wave up and available. So, always want to fly. Just getting caught slightly out of position there. Oh, they're getting themselves a little bit split up here on Empire, but it's really good for Hot Six because Juggernaut is amazing at small skirmishes as long as your ulti is up. So if you have Omni and you're fighting like 2v2 or 2v3 or something even, you can probably turn that fight. The damage output is insane. Going to see some TP reactions coming in here from Empire. Looks like they want to defend this tier one. And they're going to get always want to fly back in here as well. Yoku to join the gang. Everyone coming in with a Ray Fire Blast onto MP. They won't be able to find the chain stun from Resolution to kill him. They might look for Ian instead though. Does get the Shallow Grave off, hasn't got a TP, there's no escape for this Dazzle. And they will find the kill on Taheen. Top lane though for Rev, continuing to the push, Shabby with 15 minutes in, he's looking for the second tier 2 for his side. Sitting on pretty much 2.8k gold on top of the net worth as well. He's just going to look the old spin and TP out and they haven't got anything here that's going to be able to stop that one from happening. A Resolution has a 9 charge Bloodstone, so he got his Bloodstone immediately gets a charge, right? The, the problem with this game for Hot Six is every single small engagement that they take, if they lose a hero, Empire don't care how many people they have to rotate Dyer's to win that fight because they're always going to be getting track gold. So wasting a TP here or there is not going to mean anything to them. It's okay, fine. We get our money back because of track. That, that Dazzle kill that they got was worth like a thousand gold because of not only the gold that they gained, but the money that Heen lost by not spending his unreliable before he actually died. So it's fine. And Yoku going to be dropping middle lane here for him, finding himself yet another kill. Didn't even need Ami for that one. And they might be able to get this tower. Depends on how much Empire want to prioritize it. Well, no fortification available here. Now the Snowballons always want to fly. Just coming a little bit too close for comfort. Hot Six take the tower and they take the kill as well. Forever with that last hit onto the tower. More money in his bank, and yeah, with the Shadow Blade, and now 1,000 on top of that as well. The Shadow Blade's a, a nice choice, because a lot of heroes, you buy Shadow Blade, and you say, like, why would you buy Shadow Blade against Bounty Hunter? But the reality is, you only want it as a tool of initiation. And the other thing, too, is Juggernaut has something that a lot of other people who buy Shadow Blade don't, which is the capability of dispelling track by using Blade Fury, and then just immediately using the Shadow Blade after the fact. So you don't have to worry about buying like Manta, you don't have to buy BKB or Lotus Orb. You can just simply spin, use your Shadow Blade, or spin and then TP away. And as we've already seen, Empire don't have any real way to stop that in the first place. And Aloha Dance, I think he was spotted out by that Sentry as Forrest doing a little bit of scouting himself. Don't think walking high ground is what he wants to do, though. Indeed, he's got to be careful. He's silent and Aloha Dance. Wait, what? What's going on right now? Chilling out here, we'll get the vision there. Here we go with the silent blink forward onto Ferev, trying to bring it down, but Sheen, Heen, sorry, is there on the dazzle. Sun forcing back a lower dance here with the cogs, and that's actually going to trap up silent, but silent, he's got the armor and he has got reincarnate. Goku's got an echo slam. He'd love to he's use it if he can get in. Oh, the Omni slash bounces, though, aren't going to kill anyone. Being balanced between Sun and Yoku. There's Echo Slam. Fisher as well to control Forever. They're looking for the Juggernaut. One more right click will do it, but Forever actually going to get away here with the Shadow Blade. Elsewhere, the side of Empire were able to take down Dazzle and Clockwork. And they don't find the Jug. Forever very lucky to get away with his life after that one. That spin Shadow Blade, dude. Any other hero who buys Shadow Blade would have been dead there because you don't have any way of dispelling the track, but. That magic immunity a little bit too strong here. 
an MVP hot six. They lose a couple of heroes. Again, it's all track kills, so it's it's kind of a bummer, but they are applying pressure Radiant's to tier two in the top lane. Looks like MP will eventually be forced back. I think there's going to be a certain stage of the game where they just can't fallen. afford to give away kills. Hot six in the late game, because of the fact that Juggernaut's built like drums and Shadowblade, he might even go for Silver Edge. It's not too bad against attack. Wraith King. It stops his crit. It stops. Uh, I'm actually not sure if it stops a life steal portion. I think it stops like all passives, so it should. But either way, it's decent. And if he wants to go for that, I think it would be a, a pretty solid choice. But the, the problem with their team is they don't have any real way of getting out. They have Clockwork and Tusk, two of the hardest Radiant's initiators. And then they're playing up against attack. Disruptor and Track Vision. So it's every time you go in, if you're not 100% sure you're winning that fight, you're giving up a ton in terms of gold, at the very least. Yeah, this is the problem we're going against the bounty. You need to be very careful when they take these skirmishes. Clockwork, just about 700 or so away from his blade mail. For Rev, now, I mean, as you're saying, after the Shadow Blade build, what do you kind of opt for now? Is it, can you go straight in for something? Do you go back for an SMY here? SMY is really good still. I think that SMY is probably just one of the best Juggernaut items in general. Because the hero wants to be so active. And if you're getting position one farm, sometimes buying an SMY early just gives you the stats that you need with spin and such to be able to live through just getting right click down by a Silent, for example, who went for the armor build. So I think SMY is perfectly valid here. I think he could go for Silver Edge. I think he can go for... Uh, Manta's not really that good. He probably doesn't need that. But yeah, I think SMY or Basher, something like that. They're going to go for Roshan here, the side of Hot Six. Uh, side of Empire were able to take the tier one top, but they're not going to be able to do anything about this. And Hot Six going to very nicely get away with a free Roche. And Aegis now on your Juggernaut here. Resolution has finished off his jewels here on the left track. He has 11 Bloodstone charges at the moment. He is so fat right now. For 20 minutes in, indeed, he's, he's going to be happy with himself, but at the same time, so is for Rev. 2.5k gold on top of his Shadow Blade. They're certainly going to need something to do something to slow down this jug. How silent looking on the Wraith King? Well, on top of the blink now, looking for a blade mail himself, and uh, just uh, well, this creep will give it to him. So blade mail now on his way for Wraith King, and they found a low hard dance. Dust has been blown. He's trying to hide up in the trees. There's no way you're getting away from this one. And another free pick off here onto the bounties. That keeps happening to him. I was going to say way. he's been a little bit unfortunate here in the fact that a hot six. They've already be, always been on top with their detection. It's just that he throws out a track when he's standing on top of the hero. Like, if you're going to track, you have to be very far away and assume that the enemy team is going to have detection. Like, those types of deaths are not really the greatest. Like, sure, he gathered some information, says to the rest of Empire, okay, well, at least your guys aren't going to get ganked, but they just got Roche anyway, so there's no objective over here. Maybe they can try to push into the Tier 1 a little, but Aegis up on 4 ev means that potentially Hot Sex could be looking to take a successful fight. I'm just going to look oh, for, courier maybe? for potential Omni Slash. There's a fair few here. Oh, he's not going to go for it. I don't think he's going to go for Radiant's anything here. Bottom tower is under attack. Too many heroes about. And well, with Radiant the Aloha Dance and Silent fortified. moving in as well. He needs to be very careful about revealing himself. The rest of his team all up here on this top lane. Looking for this tier 2 and it's incredibly low. They should be able to finish it off here with this push. Radiant's bottom tower tier 1 has been fallen. taken here by resolution here on the left strap. With the Diabolic Dyer's Edict. Top tower is under attack. And, uh, 21 and a half minutes in tier 2 down on the top. It's just the final tower remaining in the mid lane here for the side of Empire. Top tower Their side fallen. of the map is uh, certainly falling to the control of MVP Hot 6 at the moment. I don't really think Hot 6 have a chance of going high ground though. Like, not this early. Maybe they can try to push the last tier 2. Even with the Aegis, their team is not... Okay, it's pretty good at pushing high ground actually. Because they have Healing War and they have Dazzle. But whenever you have a melee hero that has to hit the tower, he kind of needs to be very far ahead, or you need to win a fight prior to pushing into the tier threes to really deal a decent amount of damage to the base. So, Hot Six being able to get Roshan just means that there's going to be this kind of lull and activity from Empire, unless they really feel confident in their ability to take fights and fighting into the Aegis, they might think they can still win. And Zombie here, he's got an invis. He's going to be scouting things out. Aloha Dance also going to be finding him. Uh, the blink initiation from the side to pull up as well. He gets off the shallow grave, but he's got a TP. He's going to try for it. But uh, yeah, with the glimpse available there from Always Wanna Fly, they'll be able to hold him in place, bring down the Dazzle. And the question is, can they find anything more? Silent blinking forward. MP doesn't quite get the blink off here. The crit coming down hard there onto the Queen, bringing him down to half health. But does manage to find that blink away. Grab still yet to spend his gold here. 3.8k saved up by the Juggernaut. He's probably just thinking of what he wants to buy. 
I mean, does, does he go for something like a straight up Scotty at this point? Mm, Scotty Rush, it doesn't really seem that good. I think SNY Basher is much more likely. Oh, is it? Yeah, the Basher. Yeah. I think Basher is like super good when you have to play against a kind of beefy melee core like Wraith King, for example. And the other thing is too, he could go BKB, but I don't think you buy BKB before you buy like another utility item. Like BKB is utility, but it's not damage. Yeah, he goes back for the SNY. Okay. That makes the most sense. It's just too much of a value investment for him at this point. You get so much movement speed, you get the ability to maim, which lowers attack speed, which a lot of people forget about. It's not just movement speed, it's attack speed as well. So when you're trying to man fight another carry, that's why having Scotty and SNY together made it so difficult for a lot of people to man fight you because you just had so much attack speed slow that you're basically getting rid of like treads plus another item with attack speed on it. And Forev just priming himself, seeing if he can catch anyone out. Worth noting a low hard dance. Has got the mech complete as well. Jurex on, uh, Jurex on the side of Halt 6 has his own. Going in and with the dust, they'll be able to find a lower dance. Can't quite burst him down with the mech. They should be able to find it anyway. As they there finish off the bounty. Elsewhere, though, the Dazzle getting caught out by Yoku. Or always want to fly with the help of Silent. So one for one across the board. And uh, actually a slight edge there to the side of Hot 6. Recording those two kills. Top lane. How's your clock work doing? Well, I talked about the performance of Sun in the other game, and it's, it's looking pretty good so far. 24 minutes in with the Blade Mail and the Point Booster. Mid lane looking for Ev. They'll find the stunner now with the Blink Four from Yoku. They'll have the control. We'll be able to blow the Aegis. I think they're ready for round two. Static Storm and Kinetic Field. There's no messing around here for the side of Empire. They want him dead, and they'll get him dead as Sun. Oh, just God. going in with a hook shot, throwing his life away as well, giving a double kill to Resolution. I mean, the intention was there, but that was not the play there for Clock. Well, as soon as you see the Static Storm dropped, you have to just abandon him. Like, there's no way you can save him at that point, unless he has, like, BKB. BKB is the only way you escape that, because Radiance you're not going to be able to spin fast attack. enough. You're just immediately silenced as soon as the Aegis brings you back to life. So Sunbi, he wanted to go for the big play, ends up giving away another kill. Right now, Hot 6, that Aegis was kind of like Radiance their way of making Empire attack. not play aggressive, but the fact that he just gets caught makes it a little bit worse. Although I will say, they're doing a very good job at keeping the lanes kind of pushed out. So they're not going to lose any towers or anything like that. But next Roche, I would think that if Hot Six don't get it, Empire are going to have a huge advantage. I mean, look at Resolution. We're 25 minutes, and he's got his Shiva's Guard finish now on top of the Bloodstone yours. He's got 15 charges as well on this Bloodstone. I mean, this is one scary less rack. Yeah, seven kills, six assists here on the man, and wow, Jax just pushing up the top lane. CP's out straight away, not wanting to hang about. Sil uh, res uh, sorry, Silent was stocking up the gold here. And uh, he's going to be going for the straight up AC now. With the recipe and the Hyper Stone picked up, he's well on his way there. 26 minutes in. He's just building himself as a right clicker. That's all you really need to do is Wraith King. I wouldn't be surprised to see him also go Basher at some point. You just want to make sure that you have like Bash, Crit, Lifesteal. Like those are the things that you get when you really want to be able to man fight somebody. And Juggernaut, the way that he's building, it's kind of the same idea. Just giving yourself those stats, getting the maim, getting the movement speed and such to be able to just sit there and right-click away. The, the fortunate thing for Silent, though, is he doesn't need BKB. Get the track onto Ferev. Static Storm has been popped, but Ferev is quick with the Blade Fury. Heads down south. And, of course, there's not going to be the vision to bring him back here with the Glimpse Empire. Still looking to go. Yoku's got this Blink, remember, and the Echo Slam available as well. So, Hot Six have to be careful of how they group up. Looking into the tree line. Silent has found just Ferev. Hit. Ferev trying to TP out. It's not going to happen. Now he's Blade Furying. Sunshi even in with the Blade Mail. It's a bit of a stalemate here, looking for the big initiation from one of the sides. Fisher holding Sun in place, Silent back to work on Forev. Shallow Grave is there, buying him some time from Heenan. Now looking for Joku, looking for the Dazzle, bringing them together. They've already taken down one, two, the Shuriken bounces. And he wants a Sun as well, now the Blink Frog for Silent. This is the kind of Empire aggression we expect to see. 27 minutes going, they're just walking around the base. They got look for Jarex here as well, bringing him back into the connected field, the Fisher. And there's your Echo oh. Snap from Yoku. That's the kind of place we expect from the man. Oh, he's coming out with a snowball. Trying to buy some time. Will pop the ultimate with the reincarnate coming out for Silent, but it's all right for them because they're still going to find the kills. They find Jarex. MP will just be able to blink himself away. He's got another glimpse. Always want to fly. This is why you don't give that man Disruptor. It's going to be a team wipe. What a fight from Empire, fighting behind both tier twos, tier in the, in the base. I, this, I mean, the fact that they got away with that and Hot Six were barely able to punish them. They put the reincarnate of Silent, and they do take Yoku, but that's it. I'm 90% sure 
that that juggernaut misclicked. Because there's absolutely no way you try to TP without spinning. For whatever reason, Forev, he TP'd and then he spun. I think he actually, like, he misheated. it. He wanted to spin first and then TP, and basically that part of it kicked that entire fight off. And when you have a situation like that where your carry dies and your supports try to commit to save your carry, that's exactly what Empire want because of their team composition. We saw the combination of track and glimpse and how when they get an inch, they're going to take a mile. Every single one of these team fights, you're going to have mass tracks on everyone. You are never going to be able to run away unless glimpse is on cooldown. And unfortunately, they only needed glimpse for like one or two of the kills. I think the original one was on Forev, and then they needed glimpse again to try to bring the Queen of Pain back. Oh boy. I mean, the, the, the fact that they're getting this track god as well. I just had a look at the graph. It, it was not pretty for Hot 6. It's going down to 14,000 lead. Aloha Dance now with a completed set of Guardian Greaves and a Medallion. You look at Resolution, 20 charges on the Bloodstone, now picking up the Point Booster on his way to his next item, probably going to be the Octarine. This is, I mean, the MVP Hot 6 need to find something here. They are smoked up. Yoku just hiding in the tree line here. They're going to need to go deeper if they want to find anything Hot 6. But yeah, this, this, just everything from the side of Empire looking up for them over that last team fight. AC complete on your Wraith King. 1500 gold in the bank to spare as well. And Hot 6, and they're going to be unable to find anything with this smoke. Aloha Dance coming into the jungle now with Silent. Oh god. This could be a fight kicking off. All the ults are available for the side of Empire. Hot 6 still lacking the Sonic Wave. He's going to be able to make the first jump. They want to find Dazzle. They want to get rid of Heen. They don't. They've had enough of his shallow graves. And here we go. One, two. Going to be able to burst him down. It's going to be a hook shot for and Sun. But I don't think you want to be in here. He says, let me out. I don't want to be in this one. Goes down and lose the clockwork as well. Down on the bottom lane here. There's just Sonic Wave. Bringing Aloha does resolution low. They have already taken down Yoku. Maybe they can turn it here with the Omni Slash. Body Ring has been dropped here by. Always want to fly. Aloha does getting low and will fall. And this is Silent becoming unstoppable. Silent just walking around the fight. They haven't been able to kill him once. He's going to look for Jer Jerax. Oh, he's just going to let Resolution finish that one off here now with the Glimpse. Doesn't bring back the Jug. Has got the Blade Fury. But yet again, another fight with Empire coming out on top. Four heroes dropping on Hot 6. Empire losing just the two. And that's your bash you done for Silent. I don't really know what Hot 6 are going to be able to charges. do. They got Okay, they got two buybacks. They got buybacks. They can definitely force Empire back here, but I think if Empire get forced back, their next option is just going to be Roche. They can give it to Resolution. He's still carrying a bottle. He can just put the Aegis in, and he's got the full Soul Booster. So killing Resolution is going to become an absolute nightmare. I think Empire just wanted to try to force a buyback there. They're not going to be able to bait it out because they realize, okay, it's like 10 seconds left. Probably just better off Radiance running into the Roche end pit. And because they have Wraith King, this is a very low risk Roche. Like he's going to stay pretty much at full health the entire time. So if Hot 6 want to contest this, they're going to need their Omni Slash available, which right now 4S still has about 50 seconds on it. But I also Radiant's think they have to go for this. Like if they attack. don't go for this fight and they give Aegis to Empire, they're probably just going to get racks. But Empire actually, they're going around. They're not going for Roche. No, they're going to go for the old wraparound here, potentially coming out. Now they go back in. Silent jumping straight onto 4 m Sun has fought down the clock. These incredibly erupted. Empire can't get into outside. But Silent says, I don't need any help. I've already killed the carry. Now he's going to look for Jerax with the great five blast. Track being thrown out as well. Resolution finding the split up. That's the second hero down in this fight. Sun trying to run himself away, but always want to fly. Drops the ring. Silent drops the hammer. Double kill now for the Wraith King. Three heroes down on the side of Hot 6. And it's GG. Well played. Hot six tap out. They've had enough. Empire's aggression is too much for the side of MVP. And Empire still with a chance of finding themselves in the top four. One game down. They need to win game two. That was their last shot right there for Hot Six. Like that smoke was their only hope in bringing themselves back. That Roshan was the utmost importance. Like as soon as they realize they can't get the Roshan and Empire are gonna get it, then not only that, but at the start of the fight they lose their care their core. It's just it's too much to deal with.